Hi everybody, it's Russ from My Hammers 11. I hope you're all safe and well. If you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing and hitting the bell notification so you're notified of any time we put new videos up. We've got obviously interviews going up daily, but sometimes two, three times a day. And I wouldn't want you to meet, miss any of them because we've got some awesome guests coming up, including today's guest. So make sure you hit that bell not, uh, icon notification. As I said, today's guest is awesome. He played 296 times for the club, um, eight years in total. Um, he's 15, he appears in 15% of the uh, Hammers 11s we've had so far. That ain't bad. Uh, it's, it's, it's Tim Breaker. Hi, Tim. How you doing, man? Hi, oh, Rush. Yeah, I'm very good, thank you. Very good. How's, how's uh, I know it's the same question everyone always asks, how's lockdown treating you? Been very lucky, actually. I mean, the sun's been shining, got a garden, got a couple of dogs, got a bike. So what more could you want, you know? Uh, some old football games on telly to watch that are great. Uh, so yeah, I shouldn't complain at all. All family, all well. So yeah, that's you can't ask for no more than no, that. Not at all. Not at all. And as you said, you know, we've got old football games to watch, and hopefully, in about eleven days' time, we'll have some new football games to watch, which would be nice. Yeah, yeah, it will be. Yeah, it all seems positive, and know there's a few uh, teething problems, but it seems like they're coming through them, and hopefully, yeah, it will be back up and running as much as possible. Yeah, exactly. We'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. It'll be interesting, whatever yeah. happens. It'll be interesting, and yeah, I think, and I think also, you know, we haven't had. I think it's a hundred days since the Premier League was stopped or something like that. So I think everyone just wants to get something to moan about. You know what I mean? It's not. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we're Stan fans. Yeah. We love a moan <laughs> and we can't moan about anything yet. No, that's it. That's it. It's all good until the first ball's kicked, isn't it? I suppose. Or it, exactly. Yeah. 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 yeah and, it's, good. and it's all going to be a bit different. Um, you know, I've, I've, I've got, uh, I've had the Premier League director directives, you know, in terms of what you, mm. what's going to happen mm. and what you're going to do and what you've got to play. It's going to be a little bit different. Um, but, uh, yeah. Oh, sorry for the players are going to be confused before they even start, mate. Yeah, I mean, that, I, I'm sure that's why they've got me involved. So they know I can play arm <laughs> and play bubbles, and they know that they're at the London oh. Stadium. Oh, we're, we're playing at home. That's it. Yeah. Okay. All right. <laughs> have you have you heard? Somebody told me that when the ball goes out of play, they're going to wipe it down before it goes back in play. I don't know. I didn't see that on the. I mean, I I didn't get the plane directors. I've got like what's happening to the pitch and the surrounding. Oh. I would imagine so. There's no ball boys. And they're not having ball boys, so no, yeah, mm. which could be interesting. <laughs> could be interesting in in London Stadium, you know, <laughs> a wayward a wayward clearance, and it goes. I, I'll be. I'll have to go and get it probably from the top tier. Yeah, I ain't getting. Yeah. Your kid will be like that. Oh, I'm not getting it. Oh, I've got to go in the stand and get the ball. Yeah, it's like when you're a kid, mm. weren't it? When you were short. Yeah. I kicked it last. You get it. Yeah, but it's a. <laughs> But yeah. we'll see. Yeah. I mean, you don't know. I mean, with extra subs, um, you know, I mean, they're restricting, obviously, I think it's 300 people they can have at the game, including all the staff right. and the players. So mm. it is what it is. And, um, and yeah, but we'll try and make it as as inclusive as possible mm. as you can be. I've, I've, I've been speaking to fans, like, doing this, all, all these things. Mm. And uh, some of them are having their own Zoom parties where they're watching the game, but with all their mates, they sit around you know, in the, in the stand mm -hmm. with and just like, so they can live time moan and half time analysis. It's brilliant. I'll tell you what, it's, it's a, it's a resolve of the British people and the West Ham fans particularly, I think, I think they're going to make yeah. it work. So, uh, and that's how this yeah, channel that's started. And that's oh, how right. the, yeah. it, yeah. it started yeah. out of just a, that sort of coronavirus board, looking back at old mm. videos, looking back at the season reviews. Mm -hmm. And I thought, yeah. And it started as like a little idea and it just grew because like the West Ham family and fans yeah. and players. So, you know, players no, giving brilliant. your number and name and it's like, it's just mental. Yeah. No, you, sometimes you, you don't get a chance to stop, especially with football and work, I've worked in it since I finished really. Mm. Um, you don't get a chance to stop and look back. Do you know what I mean? As a no. player, you go on to the next season and then end of the season you, you sort of have a couple of weeks holiday and then you're thinking oh right, I better keep myself fit and before you know it's round again and you're playing and you don't get a chance to actually look back about look back on your career as such or the last so many years or games and I know I've got I've got videos somewhere of games that I played in but I don't think I've ever watched any of them you know I've never watched them I've still got them but I haven't watched them so yeah. damn see how bad I was well, I mean, you know, 296 games, that's quite a few hours, even even with Netflix, you know, that's, uh, 
<laughs> that's a long time to get through no. to complete it. No. Yeah, even <laughs> so, in lockdown, yeah, I wouldn't go. Even, go even in lockdown, when it comes to like, you know, I don't know, Oxford United in 92, 93, it's like, it's getting a few years on, isn't it? You're like, oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, so yeah. obviously, you know, you, you joined in, you know, obviously eight years, you know, you came from Luton, you know, Bonzo obviously got you in for 600 grand, I think it was at the time. The first question I ask all all West Ham ex players is is why West Ham? Why join West Ham, Tim? Um, yeah, good question. I, I mean, um, at the time I was at Luton and um, I was in the old First Division, and West Ham were in the division below. And as it happened, I'd met Lou Macari in the summer previous to that, um, and nothing came of it. Um, and then Luton was struggling financially. So I was aware that I was one of the ones that they could sell. Um, and West Ham came in, you know. Um, they they sort of, uh, the club, although I didn't have an agent, it was the club sort of said to me, or somebody at the club said, listen, don't, we don't want you to go. We don't want you to sign as well because we think there's others coming in for you, you know. So hold off. And it was almost like, mm, they, am I being used a bit here to go and have a meeting? And then, yeah. but uh, when I met Bill, um, he was fantastic. Eddie Bailey was there, who was the chief scout. Uh, I think Tom Finn. And, you know, for me, it was, when can I sign? When can I come and join you? I mean, mm-hmm. things were going well. As West Ham at the top of the league, I knew Luton were going to be struggling uh, financially if they were getting rid of all the players as well. Um, so it was a no-brainer, but I was almost told to not not say that, you know. Go home and... and um, and tell him I'm thinking about it. And Bill actually rang me and said, oh, you know, what's happening? And it was quite a hard conversation to say, uh, I couldn't say that I've been told not to sign yet, but I, yeah. I didn't want to sound like I wasn't interested. So anyway, it all came to fruition and uh, yeah, I was pleased. And uh, it, straight away it felt, although it was a much bigger club than Lou and it felt similar in terms of um, a family club and very friendly club and the supporters and, the way they wanted to play football and which I enjoyed and so it was it was it was a great fit and I really enjoyed it. The team was going well and we sort of had a settled side as soon as I sort of got going and, and it was a great season, you know, I really enjoyed the first season. Um and it made it easier like like I say I was going into a winning team so that was made it a lot easier, you know. Yeah, yeah, totally. And obviously you you you, know, you suffer. You had a bit of a, a few promotions. We don't go to a relegation. Mm-hmm. Promotions. You know that's that, that yeah. was. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, yeah, don't talk about that. Yeah, you have to get relegated to be promoted. We know that, but it doesn't matter. Um, it's the West Ham way. We don't look at that. We look at the uh, the positives all the time. So yeah. So yeah. obviously some promotions. Um, you know, obviously that that great. I mean, I always remember the, that ninety two ninety three season as being an amazing season. That Cambridge United and that was a that was sort of my. That was my sort of, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. You, know you, have, you have certain periods and you're like, and that was yeah. like amazing because it had just got into West Ham and I was a bit of a glory hunter, obviously, because we were, you know, we were riding high in the second division uh, when I started, but it was amazing. And obviously, you know, from then on, so there's a 200, you know, almost 300 games to the club. For you, what sort of, there's obviously so many highlights and there's probably so obviously low lights, but the highlights we're talking about, obviously promotions. Were there any sort of games or, or moments or, or goal, goals yeah. you scored which stick in your head? Yeah, um, goals didn't happen very often, you know. Sometimes uh, More I than, did score I, yeah. Or one, yeah, yeah, or two. But uh, yeah, there's that one that comes to mind, the, Ever- the Everton game, because yeah. we won the game hill and it was always a reminder, oh, the first goal in the year, that sort of thing. And um, yeah. My wife's family are Everton supporters, so I've got a picture of it somewhere celebrating them. Uh, but um, yeah, things like that you, you remember. You remember um, the people as well, like the players that you played with, the staff at the club, um, you know, the, the feeling around the place, especially when obviously like things are going well and, and you are getting promoted and you're on a roll and you sort of just turn up and play and, in, and you enjoy your playing more. Uh, having said that, sometimes, you know, there's, there's pressure even when you're at the top. A club like West Ham, if you're in the top of that yeah. division, you you've got to get promoted, you know. So there is yeah. pressure with that. But I've had relegation battles, you know. When I was at, at Luton, um, I had some at West Ham. I went on to QPR and had it there. And when you need to win that last game of the season to stay up, that that is pressure. That is the worst pressure you can have as a player, and it's hard to play properly with that. 
Um, but yeah, in, I remember the FA Cup games, like the uh, the quarter final game. Um, yeah. And when I first come to West Ham, like the lads always said to me, you know, wait till night game under the lights. It's be a special atmosphere, and and it was, you know, and yeah. and um, even more, even that quarter quarter final of the cup. And it was absolutely electric, and I still remember that as like an amazing atmosphere, you know, and the roof lifting off the place when we scored, and the whole thing. It was, it was, you know, them sort of things, the noise, and they things that stay with you, you know, you yeah. know, because um, you don't get that very often. You know, you support it now. You go. I, I mean, I, I've been a scout for years as well, so I've gone to a lot of football matches and yeah, of course. been been a coach and everything, but. When you're a player and that happens in in the stadium and at home in front of your own fans and you go on to win the game and you know, they they're special days. Yeah, and that's what, and also you know for particularly Upton Park, obviously it's quite and people always said it was a tight ground and it was a tight ground. And as a fullback, you're so close to those fans, particularly down that chicken yeah. run, <laughs> that yeah. chicken run when you're. Uh, yeah. It must, you know. As as a, I mean, it's a question I've ever asked before. But as like a, a, a full, but you know, because obviously the goalkeepers they tend to know the player, like the, the fans behind them, because it's easy mm-hmm. when they clap them. Was that the same with like you as a fullback? You know, the guys on the sort of the the right of the chicken run or whatever. Would you sort of yeah, yeah right? How you doing, Bob? You know, yeah, 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 yeah. You were very close to them, and you you know you knew they were there. Um, obviously, that if it weren't going well, then you knew they were there as well. But. Luckily for me, I didn't really have many bad times at, at the club and, um, you know, they always seem to be behind you. And, and to be honest, even when the team was struggling and they seem to recognise that, sometimes you got more stick when you was, I don't know, at the top of, say, the, the old, um, you know, the old uh, second division yeah. and you were nil nil at home against a lowly team, you got more stick then, you know. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I generally I had a good sort of relationship with the fans. I think they... Okay, you know they they sort of realised I was I was giving it my best shot, and that's all you can do in it. And yeah. you know, that was something I always tried to do whenever I played. Was you know I might not have been the best or the most technical or what I could run and uh, show that I was enthusiastic, and that's all I sort of try to do. And I think they appreciate that. Yeah, and I think you're right. I think that it's West Ham fans. You know, not not saying you, but they they all love a trier, don't they? So it's like if you like, I was remember like like Ian Dowie and stuff like that. Who'd run after the ball in the court? He's not going to get it. We know he's not going to get it, but he still did it. And everyone yeah. like, and that's what West Ham yeah. fan. We we were realistic, you know. We know we're not going to stick in the Premier League. Championship is a bit different because there was assumption that we should be going up and stuff. But yeah. in the Premier League, yeah. we're not, not going to win the Premier League. You know, we're off, yeah, we know that's not going to happen. Mm. And so mm. we just want to be entertained and have people who put the shirt on and, and feel like they're yeah. actually going for it, innit? And I think that mm. and I, you and you epitomise that, Tim. To be honest, um, and mm. as I said, you know, we've had how many how many players have come through West Ham, you know, in people's lifetime, mm. and you know, I said 15, 15 20 percent of them have picked you in this in their squad. Oh, so uh, in it, mm. so it's, it's good. So you know, it's it, it, yeah. It's one of those things, and, and to be honest, myself, you know, I've I've got a confession. You know, I've been watching those end of season reviews on YouTube again, going for Elgo, and I didn't realise how much how much stuff you did, mate. I'll be honest. I'll be per- perfectly <laughs> perfectly honest. I think because I was younger then, and younger, no yeah. disrespect, and it's not the fullbacks. It's it's no, you know, no, it's, no. it's 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 Bish, and it's and it's and it's Trevor Morley. Mm. But I think mm. I was like. He get you you bombed bomb forward on that right side and you know cut you cut inside quite a bit you know it was and I had this sort of newfound respect for you so to speak you know and it was absolutely brilliant watching back as you said looking back because it's football so quick all the time now yeah and everything changes yeah. you just don't have time to do it and um yeah. and and it's yeah. it's more so anyway we're talking about the players talking yeah. about the players you played with as I said what we try and do is with most all our guests is do it an eleven now uh, yeah where well, you pick the eleven players that. Uh, that, that for you, you you played with you know your goalkeepers and things like that. So it'd be great to sort of get your handle on that. And obviously, you played with some load of players in across three hundred odd game, you know, two hundred ninety. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but it'd be good to get your your handle on some things. And and obviously, sure. you know, and and because I'm sure yeah, there's lots of stories and characters from that whole yeah. era. That was that was the last era, I think. You know, where yeah. football characters were around. You know what I mean? It's like you know, yeah. it was, it's like you don't get. You don't even get Paolo's anymore. You don't get Monksies. You don't get Martin no. Allen's. You don't get those those fun players. It's too professional. No. It's it's a bit sad. No. 
Yeah, it's um, one one thing about in those days. Yeah, it wasn't okay. There was money was important, but it's so big now. It must be hard for the players to even relax and do anything. And mm. you know, okay, financially fantastic for them, but I wouldn't have swapped my era to be honest. Mm. In terms of the characters and the fun and the times, and you know, okay, you were professional and you tried to do everything you could, but you actually, you know, you did enjoy being around the, the lads and you know you it was you know you weren't sitting on your laptops or your mm. on the coach who was playing cards and there was banter and you know it was it was non-stop really and from the day you went in and you know the, the training was almost separate to it and the games and you know the times you had away on trips and things yeah that's the things that you know people said to me oh you played in that game against such I was there I was like oh what was the score I can't really remember but you tell me about a Christmas party or a <laughs> <laughs> night out or an end of season i can remember all those yeah 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 no, they yeah they've come through and uh yeah particularly bish and uh and uh, and uh mad dog yeah they've come through with a few yes yeah, stories mm-hmm. uh, like yeah. for example um <laughs> Martin told told me Bish's uh, love of uh, an extra strong mint and a polo. He always had a pack of polos in his pocket, so the old uh, the old manager didn't spell lose on him. <laughs> Fair play, yeah. you know. Yeah. It's just yeah. a different era. Um, so so for you, Tim, um, in goal, who? I mean, you, I could probably guess who your goal is going to be. To be honest, um, yeah. it would be in goal for you. Yeah, it would have to be Ludo, of course. Um, Fantastic player, fantastic guy. Um, one of those, uh, you know, you, th- you think in any era he would stand out as an unbelievable yeah. goalkeeper um, in terms of being able to do everything for, as a big guy, uh, athleticism, get down low, shot stopping. Um, probably he's kicking later on in his career. It wasn't something that goalkeepers now, they practice it from... A young age, you know, yeah. but I'm sure if he was in that era and he he was brought up with that, he'd have been brilliant at that as well because mm. he's that type of guy who takes his hands or anything. But yeah, he, he was fantastic for for me and um, but just the you know this the sheer size of him and and the dominance of him. But then, like I say, down low he'd always make a save. You know, he's just fan, fantastic, organise you, talk to you. Um, in his own way, and, uh, but good, yeah, absolutely top, top class goalkeeper and a top class guy as well, you know, yeah. definitely, yeah. I mean, later on, Shaka, a few games, and yeah. Craig, people like that, obviously fantastic goalkeepers, but from day one when I went into the football club, um, Ludo was the main man, and it's like, I didn't really know much about him, it was yeah. like, a, wow, what a player this is, you know, how have we got him, how have we got him in this division, and, you know, an international, and, you know, fair play, fantastic, fantastic yeah. player. Fantastic. Yeah, no, I agree totally. As you said, yeah. I mean, you'd be, we, I think West Ham being blessed with goalkeepers, to be honest. It's not an area we've always um, had issue with, to be fair. And maybe, maybe for a few months last season. Um, but, and then, then, but then they, he put David in and it seemed to be all right then. But uh, yeah, no, it's, we, we've goalkeepers, we don't always have an issue with. We've always seen you know, David James, Greeno, obviously Shaka, yeah. Fabianski. Yeah. Even before Ludo, obviously a Parksy, Mervyn Day and stuff. Yeah. So now we've done all right with him. Okay, let's go. Let's go left back. Who will be your left back? I could probably guess this one as well, but who would be yeah. your left back? Yeah, it would have to be Dixie. You know, yeah. different class. Um, what a player again! Another one where I didn't. I knew a bit about him from playing against him, being down that side, and knew that there was uh, you know the type of character he was. Uh, but I got to be honest, didn't realise how technically good he was. Mm. Um, as well as obviously being a tough tackler, tackler and a, um, the sort of player you'd want on your side, um, but technically very good as well. Um, so yeah, he would have to be my left back definitely. You know, yeah. great penalty taker as well. Um, great lad. Uh, yeah, I couldn't fault him. I wish I wish I was like him in a lot of ways when when I first come to the club and um, I'd been used to a regime of lots of stretching and warm-ups and everything and it wasn't like that there and he he was one who just come out and start belting balls around before training like he's in the park just having a you know, kick around you know and I'd, I'd have to stretch for half an hour or so before the warm-up began you know so I sort of envied that side of him definitely but um, no he's a fant- yeah. fantastic player um, only other what David Burrows I mean came in for yeah. a little bit uh, when Julian went the other way but mm. um then we got him back again and you know and, and to think as well a lot of the time that he 
he was wasn't one hundred percent fit no. uh, with his knee, and mm-hmm. he battled through with that. And I remember him spending a lot of time uh, rehabbing and mm-hmm. uh, working. Um, you know, um, fair play to him. What, what a good yeah. player. Chris Hutton as well came in. I'm just yeah. thinking of when I mean, Julian wasn't about Chris Hutton. Fantastic uh, professional. Um, helped us a lot around the dressing room and as a as a player too. But yeah, another good good player and great character, obviously. Um, but yeah, Dixie would have to be my left back. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's, pretty, that's, that's pretty nailed on. I'll be honest yeah. with that. Yeah. yeah. Now, are you yeah. gonna are you gonna play yourself at right back? I suppose I'll have to. Really, I should do. I mean, I mean, I mean, Tony Gale did. Tony Gale put himself centre back, yeah. uh, penalty taker, free kick taker, captain, and first team manager and coach. So yeah. That, that, Surprise me with Gailey, yeah. yeah. We'll, put, we'll yeah. put you in. We'll put you in right back. We put me in. All right. Okay. I mean, Kenny was there with me. Of course, um, Kenny, yeah. Kenny, great player, great lad, and um, got on well, despite, you know, obviously we were both going for the same shirt. Um, same with Potsy, really, when I first came into the club. Yeah. Um, he was the right back. Um, I didn't, you know, um, he's, I think the first game I didn't get straight in. Um, and then I was gradually put in and he was moved to centre half. Um, and I've never ever spoke to him about it, but you think maybe that helped him in some ways because he'd become an unbelievable centre yeah, half. Um, and we were good mates as well, you know, there was never any sort of animosity at all with him. He's, you know, we, we roomed together, we were mates. And I've uh, seen him a few times on the circuit when I've been doing my scouting and stuff. And yeah. Looks exactly the same. Same does, yeah. It? yeah. A lot, a lot of yeah. people do, Tim. Yeah. There's, there's a couple who don't, but yeah, I not mean, me. not me, not no, me. Tim, no, you still look very serious. Still, like, as <laughs> what, did, what did Martin call you? The machine and the robot. That's what he called <laughs> you. The machine. That's like what yeah. the robot? The machine. Okay, got the machine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 That, ain't a bad, that. that ain't a bad nickname, to be honest. Based on other nicknames that some people have, you know, yeah. the machine. I, I, I'll take yeah, that. I yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Who's gonna go? Yeah. Who's gonna go centre backs for you then, Tim? In your um, a game when I came in, uh, Gailey and Alvin were were sort of um, season pros, if you like. They've been there a while, and you know, great pros, great um, characters, both of them in different ways. Uh, good partnership, both of them very, very comfortable on the ball. Um, um, both good in the air, you know, good players. Um, Potts, he went there and I think he complimented both of them in other ways in terms of reading the game and, mm. and pace. And um, But there's, you know, then uh, Slav and Bilic coming in for a bit. Mark Reaper, uh, Piercy, do you know what I mean? All very, very good players. Mm. Very good in their own ways, you know. Um, but I'd have to I'd have to go for Potsy, uh, definitely because I've probably played more games with him. Yeah. Um, and then there's a partnership made with Alvin or Tony. Um, I probably have to go for Alvin. Yeah. Because yeah. probably because it, I probably needed Alvin next to me um, in terms of leadership and grabbing me by the scruff of the neck and not letting me get forward as much as you know, <laughs> I wanted to. And sometimes I needed somebody like that. So yeah, I'd have to go sure. with Alvin for that because yeah. I, I did argue with him when he said like no you stand here next to me then so all right i better do as i'm told here so yeah alvin i'll go for alvin yeah. Yeah. Alvin uh, sorry alvin yeah yeah, yeah. No, was great rio came in as well for a little bit yeah didn't i mean he, well. a, yeah i mean you've had a you've had yeah. a, a whole heap of amazing yeah. center backs you know you played yeah. with um yeah yeah, and yeah he rio came in just at the start of his career and yeah. you could see then what a player was going to be you know um, and fair play to him went on and had an amazing career but yeah yeah. how could you forget Rio no mm. yeah exactly how could we forget Rio but yeah I mean and obviously you know, Potsy's still around obviously under 23's coach you know, yeah. in the club and uh, yeah and, and Alvin's mm. Alvin isn't he Alvin's still Alvin uh, you know there's not many there's not many sort of and I think it's, it's actually someone was saying it the other day actually there's a lot of uh, you know, Alvin wasn't from around these parts, so to speak. You know, and he just he just got West Ham. You know, he's almost like mm. a stocky cotton. He still lives around the area. Um, yeah. Same with someone like Waldy. You know, it seems that that sort of that Liverpool area. Yeah. There must be some 
I don't know whether it's all down to the <laughs> the dockers and and and, and the, you know, the the ironworks people, but it does seem like there's this sort of a lot of our sort of Liverpool-based players who come down end up sort of mm-hmm. staying, so to speak. And it's it's, it's lovely to see. Um, yeah. Right, okay, we'll put Alvin and Potsy. Let's go midfield then, Tim. Let's go. Let's go left wing or left midfield. Sorry, I keep getting told off. Yeah, left midfield. Yeah, um, yeah. Um, straight away to mine comes uh, Stuart Slater, Chopper. Yeah. Um, because when I came into the club, he 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 was phenomenal that season um, in terms of being out, beat people with the ball, come inside and score. Uh, always energetic, always wanted the ball. You know, fullbacks nightmare. I'm glad I wasn't playing against him. You know, uh, come short and get it and run at you or running behind you, quick and um, a great player, good kid too. Um, I know he, he always hankered to play up front and maybe, I, don't, I never spoke to him about it, but, you know, maybe if he'd have stayed around a bit longer and, and nailed down that side of the pitch for himself, then, you know, he could have been there for a long, long time, I think. But you could understand he was young and he just felt that he could do it up front and wanted to go at that. And I think that was a little bit to do with why he moved on. But, um, yeah. yeah, he comes to mind straight away as a great player and, like you say, you remember them times when things are going well, and and you know just when you when you're attacking, you're seeing him doing his thing. It's brilliant, you know, brilliant counter attacking as well. So yeah, very good. But I mean, I, from doing my recruitment stuff, it's hard to find left wingers. You know, left yeah. footers, left. Yeah. Very hard, and you know, and I, I know um, Harry brought in Keith Rowland's a good player, and Matty Holmes yeah. and that side, and then. Stan Lazaridis as well. Um, yeah, yeah. Who I had a bit of a hand in bringing in, but that's another story. Okay. Uh, because he uh, he uh, taught me to shred when we were in Australia one time. Oh, yeah, so, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. When he was yeah, over there, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so uh, he owes me, he still owes me on that. But um, yeah, I'd have to go for Stuart Slater, to be honest, yeah. chop up. And, yeah. and, and you're totally right about that sort of, you know, it's 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 the way the games change, isn't it? Really, you don't get that winger like he just beats people for pace, like like Lazy used to, or whatever. You know, just knocking as you said, like knock it past the fullback and just cross it in. It seems such a simple game. Um, yeah, yeah. I know from, play, from playing there, people always, always get the question of who was your worst, who was your hardest opponent, you know, and yeah, people like Ginola and John Barnes and Chris Waddle and. Uh, fantastic players and the thing about them was that they could do both they could come inside yeah. on the right foot and if you stop that they went down the line and crossed it you know so you go, oh what do I do what do I do you know <laughs> if you got too tight to them they were quick if you stayed off them they beat you with a pass you know they were, yeah. they were the they were the best ones you know and I think Stuart had a bit of that definitely about him they could yeah. do a bit of everything good shout okay we'll put Stuart on the left who's going to go on right midfield the other side then um Again, thoughts go back to when I come in and Kevin Keane um, got used to playing with him, really liked playing with him, could just give him the ball in tight areas. He always wanted it in tight areas. Um, very rarely gave the ball away. You could see a pass and then you could move off that, you know, and mm. get your attacking play going. Um, you know, he, he seemed to always, he could find you with a one-touch pass as well. We seemed to have a little bit of telepathy, knowing where each other was a bit. Um, and that was more him knowing where I was more than me knowing where he was. But yeah. uh, he, he was such a he was such a, a, a clever player that you didn't always see what he did, and you know, wasn't wasn't particularly physically strong. He run all day, wasn't particularly quick, but he could affect the game. Mm. And I think you know um, if you wanted him inside, he'd come in off the line. If you wanted him wide, he'd be wide. Do you, do you know what I mean? We just got on just straight away. I found like I could play with him, you know. Um, so. So Keane comes to mind. Uh, Mike Marsh was very similar to that as well. Very similar in terms of um, technical player. You could give the ball to in tight areas. Um, very um, aware of where people were in terms of forwards and run, runners off him. And would always want to, like, like Kev, would always want to help out defensively, which mm-hmm. always helps out fullback as well. And uh, So those two come to mind, definitely. Um, trying to think. Who else might have played out there for us? But um, I would say Keeney definitely yeah. for me because yeah. when I first started there and we got on well and like I say great great kid and 
I was I was disappointed when he left. Really, we were both mm. at the same time. Our contracts were up, and um, he ended up going, and I'd, I'd stayed. But um, yeah, I was disappointed for him to go. To be honest, mm. yeah. But again, yeah. you know, back in the fold, you know, under 18s coach now, and uh, yeah, no, I and you know, yeah. he's and he's. I think I think now he's approaching sort of 20 years service, obviously playing and coaching. So yeah, Keno. Yeah. Good shout. Okay, let, let's go. Let's go midfield then, Tim. Who's your Who's your midfielders? Who's your two in the mid? Um, yeah, again, hard to say. Like fantastic players. Uh, yeah. Bish comes to mind. Johnny Monks uh, in terms of technical ability. And again, like I'm saying with Keeney, they they'll have the ball in tight areas. Always want the ball. Never shy away yeah. from having it. Which gives you a little bit of time if you can't get your head up. You can give it to them and know you're not going. You know they. They're always going to help you out, you know, and um, those two, maybe not together um, because you need different types, but they probably would say, yeah, don't worry, we'll, we can play together, no problem, you know, I'd say they would. Um, but then you then you need maybe for me another type like a Stevie Lomas, um, a physical type, um, put the foot in, organise, play simple, have energy, Good leadership, that sort of thing. Uh, Martin comes to mind as well. Martin Allen, um, Peter Butler, Georgie Paris was in there as well. My first season, so him and Bish together was good. Um, mm. So yeah, yeah, a lot of lot of ones that come to mind. That I think you know, very good players, all of them in their own ways. I mean, Frank Lampard coming for a bit, mm. um, and then you're talking about sort of more like your your forward thinking ones like Frank and. Hutch, uh, Al Berkovich, people like that, like want to play in that number 10 one. Um, yeah, some very good players. But if I had to pick two of, as maybe a partnership, I think I'd go for Bish and Lomi. Oh, yeah, so, nice. So, sorry, Monk E, but <laughs> it would have to be on the bench for me. He'd be in the squad anyway, just for reason. Yeah. Like, he's yeah. entertainment value. You'd, you'd and keep him. Yeah. Well. Exactly. You'd keep him in the yeah. squad. squad. You'd keep him in the squad, yeah. wouldn't you? Yeah. <laughs> what was it what like? Was... What was it like when they were all together? When they were all on it, you know, like with like John, you know, it's, it must have been like non-stop when it was training. Yeah, oh, it was great. It was great, great. Uh, you know, they think never a dull day scenario. No. You know, there was always something. There was some talk about always something happening, or, or you know, uh, monkey mad. He's just mad. He, he's one of the funniest blokes of ever met in football out of football he just made me laugh and I could think of stories but I don't want to get him in trouble no, but no, I, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you probably heard him off camera or whatever but yeah he just he's he had it about him that he just could make people laugh yeah. just fantastic and uh, Martin a bit you know the mad side of him I remember Alvin being a character around the place as well as Gailey obviously George Paris people yeah. like that some, some great some great characters uh uh, Trevor Morley, Jimmy Quinn, you know, mm. loads of lads, Dixie, yeah. you know, they're all all good characters. All all. In. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, Bish tells a story of basically how he constantly wound up Alvin. Um, anything to do with sport, like pool or table tennis, he would like. Mm. <laughs> he'd always wind him up, and he was like, he'd love winding him up. It was so funny. Yeah. That's what I mean. Yeah. It, it seems like it was a real. Like throughout that period, that seemed to always be a togetherness with the squad. You know what I mean? I yeah. Maybe because yeah. you're all like good mates and you go out for beer after or whatever. But it, there was that there was that sort of togetherness, mm. and then it's it was it was, it was infectious. Well, yeah, there was it's, it's it's interesting really. There's quite a lot of stability, even in terms of you know um, the club had obviously been relegated, but you mm. still had two centre halves there who'd been there for for quite a few years, you know. So there was that that stability that was still there. Uh, obviously, Bill was a manager who knew the club inside out, you know, as a player. Um, you know, there was that. And um, lads who'd come through as well, George Paris and, yeah. and Potsy and, you know, uh, Keeney. Do you know what I mean? They, there was lads who'd come through, so there was that. And then that, that kept going. And, you know, that I think that sort of, you keep that atmosphere through the club. It's easier then. So when one goes in, this is what we do sort of thing. And, yeah. you know, Go go with it, you know. I remember. I think I'd only been there um, a week or two, and there was this big party going on, and and I think it was George was organising it and handing out all these um, invites to to whoever, and 
I was like, all right, turn up. So I went along and couldn't believe it. it was, we'd taken over this nightclub or something and it was just full. There was literally the players, the squad, and the rest of it was just women. I thought, what's going on here? This is like, you know, I'd never seen nothing like it before. I thought, you know, this, it was, but it was fun. It was, it was, yeah. it was really good fun. And, um, yeah, and, it, you know, it, we, they made me welcome straight away, and which was, which was great, you know. And obviously with, with Potsy being fantastic character and everybody loved him and it was almost like I'd come in to replace him and uh, you know but he couldn't have been better about it you know he, you know he was blessed it with me and and um like I say he went on to become a legend of a centre half at the club so mm. you know I'm glad that, that it worked out yeah no totally that makes perfect yeah. sense yeah. yeah uh and let's go up front then I think it's again to be tricky I think Tim yeah He's yeah. going to be up front for the for the breaker eleven. Yeah. Um, again, you go back to when you first joined. Yeah, uh, Trevor Morley, Nigel, as he got known. Um, uh, Jimmy Quinn, um, others come in as well. I mean, Ian Dowie towards the end of that season. Um, you know, Clive Allen came in for a bit along the way, uh, playing games. David Speedy. Yeah. You know, all different, all different types. All had their own things uh, that they were good at. Then later on, we had John Artson and Paul Kitson. Yeah. Um, like I said, Hutch a little bit playing behind them. Al Berkovich, you know, very, very good players. Um, you know, again, I think it's all partnerships is really important. Yeah. Um, you know, something like, Jock, could could John Artson play with Trevor? Possibly, possibly. Tony Capotti, of course, as well, you know, a goal scorer. And, and Frank was there when I came in, Frank McAvenny, and but I didn't really get to play with him. You know, he was, no. he had a career and, and um, you know, you can see how there was a fantastic partnership. And, um, and but I, I, again, you go back to when you start and from where I go, I got on well with Trevor in terms of, mm. um, he just, he was one of those, and I've had it with coaching as well, where you want, him to make your mind up so you you know you, you get your head up and you're looking and he just made yeah. my mind up fine whether it was short long or he, he was one of those he, he, he'd sort of make a, a half decent ball into a, yeah. a good ball or a crap ball into a, you know a half decent one but he he, he was one of those I, I enjoy playing with um, always use his body hold the ball up get mm. fouls and um, you know as a as a fullback playing with somebody you wanted to be able to hit, he was good like that. John Hartson, very similar, obviously in in the prime of his career as well at the time. Again, yeah. shame he didn't play around a bit longer. Um, Paul Kitson again, a partnership with the two of them. You can yeah. see how that worked well. One who who was more mobile in his channels. Um, and then you got your goal scorer types like. Uh, like I say, Tony Cotty, a fantastic finisher. Mm. Clive Allen, I remember Clive coming in and watching him, and he was towards the end of his career, but what a finisher. He yeah. was phenomenal. And I'm going to think, oh, thank God, he's you know, made something look easy, you know. And yeah. you got somebody like that. Those, those strikers, you know, they're worth the weight in goal for you mm. on the goal side of it. Um, but coming back to who would, I, who would I pick, then I think for what I said earlier, I'd have to go with Trevor because yeah. of the way you know memories of playing with him and and not telepathy but getting that feeling from him that you knew what he wanted and yeah sure and uns- unsung as well you know didn't always get mm. the goals and but did all the work never stopped running uh kept working a uh, great bloke um yeah to go with him uh i mean i didn't play enough with tc but that would be a good partnership obviously yeah. like a frank frank type and a and a, yeah. and a goal scorer type you know um uh, John Artson, like I say, was probably in his prime, so I might have to go with John. But could him and Trevor play together? I don't know. Ah, who cares? I mean, the, the centre—I mean, the centre backs wouldn't have a nice day, would they? If they both turned up, no, that's for sure. No, that's, that's it. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, that's I don't for sure. Think it, it'd be a bit harder from these days, but back then, yeah, yeah, you'd say, "All right, we'll be all right with those two up front, definitely." definitely. Exactly. Yeah. That's a great thing. Tim, that's awesome, man. Oh, it's, it's really good. And obviously, it's been great chatting. It's been absolutely amazing. Thank you so much. Um, it's been good fun. Uh, and obviously, it's thank you to everyone who's, who's been watching, obviously, the video. Yeah, like, share, subscribe. Uh, you know what to do. And until next time, for me and Tim, take care, everybody, and stay safe. See ya. Bye-bye.